leg from Wakefield. Oh. Leeds Rhinos are defending their crown. And what a moment for Halifax Rugby League. Oh. Austin is through and Warrington dominating. Great try for the Robins. And as the Giants take the points home. And this is a full lad. Hello and welcome to The Last Tackle. The Super League is back and we have the second round of the Betfred Challenge Cup as well. So to talk rugby league for the next 45 minutes or so, I'm joined by Paul Sculthorpe and from the Daily Mirror, it's Gareth Walker. Gents, thanks for joining us. It's back and it's been a long off season, hasn't it? It certainly has, Mark, hasn't it? It's, uh, how good was it to see, to see rugby league and, and Super League back you know, and, uh, and, and all six games? You know, screened as well, so you know the fans got to, to see what they've been missing for a, for a long while. Uh, you work for the newspapers, Gareth, but a success story on the TV. Some record viewing figures for Super League. Yeah, that was really encouraging, wasn't it? We saw some great games, didn't we? You know, we'd, we'd listened a lot about this long off-season that players had had together, which is unusual in rugby league, 12 weeks build-up. And the players delivered, didn't they? None more so, perhaps, than that Saturday afternoon when they said the, the figures were particularly good, culminating in that golden point win for Catalans. Uh, we're going to be looking back at all the action, but we start on Friday night. It's the new boys, Lee Centurions versus the Wigan Warriors. Liam Hood waits. Hood's going to go himself, and Hood has he found the line? Pick up and go hard, go low, and go with the determination. The Lee Centurions way just now. Inside the 23rd minute, Wallace. Briley, the runner, it's Thorn Lee. Lee don't want the half-time hooter at all. Nice offload. They're in again down the centre of the field. Liam Hood, sensational break. What a kick. It's going to be another try. Powell. It was Partington, this is Lulawai. Now it's Bateman. Manages to get the ball away. Isa, Bibby. And Wigan do cross before the break. Jake Bibby. Inches to work in, but he managed to do so successfully. It would be heartbreaking for Lee if they were to concede again. So close to the break, Bateman, silky skills. If he cuts back inside, manages to find an offload as well. On the other side of the main stand here, Joe Shorrocks, sensational cricketer, as a sensational try is scored by Joe Bullock. Wigan got the set restart. And in the blink of an eye, the Warriors score their third try of the evening. Hardacre stationed there again, and with 15 minutes to go, he's got away here, Zach Hardacre. Through the cover, he's quick as Hardacre. Hardacre against Briley. Hardacre has support. Jay Bibby is there. Bibby to the line. In those living rooms back in Wigan. So it was uh, the eight. Twenty, uh, Gareth. Obviously, Lee would have been gutted after that eighteen 0 open. If Joe Mello had picked that ball up, it could have been a different story, could it? I know that was a pivotal moment, wasn't it? Eighteen 0 the ball brought loose. He went upfield, and if he could just have gathered it, I think Lewis Tierney was right alongside him. They wouldn't have caught him, and it's twenty-four nil. I've got to give some credit to Wigan for battling back. You know, they're missing a lot of players. And we've been told, you know, Jai Field, their new signing's got an injury that's going to keep him out for five months, so they'll be up against it in Huge the backs, blow. won't they? It is, yeah. Uh, but Lee, loads of positive signs. As, as a team coming up with less preparation time than anybody else, uh, there were some good signs there despite defeat. Uh, Scully, typical Wigan in many respects, all at sea, looked awful, 18 0 down, come back, grind it out, win. I think that's big game experience, isn't it? That you know, when you when you're doing it tough, you you know, you've got that composure to be able to, to pull it back, and that's what Wigan did. It was far from a from a polished performance, wasn't it? But all credit to Lee, as Gareth said, you know, they they've had the less preparation of anybody, you know, a late in, inclusion into into Super League as well. And I think one thing that Lee are never ever going to struggle with is, is that enthusiasm into into games and, and, and aggression, and and that's something that we we saw from the off, and, and certainly against the, the local rivals, Wigan. There was never going to be any, any lacking of that. Uh, maybe just that, that bit of quality at the, at the back end of the game and that, that big game experience and probably fitness. 
and John Duffy said after the game, have got to learn from this. Yeah, they have, and uh, you know, I'm sure they will do. I'm sure they will. You know, just that that bit of composure, and and I think the more and more the, the games go on, the, the more and more they'll learn from that. Yeah, I mean, I think there's still a, a great shout to be very competitive at that bottom end. They'll be very wary, I think, of of not falling short in a, in a load of games early on and ending up with no points after a certain amount of games. They will want to pick those wins up. But they've got a lot of Super League experience in that squad. There's some real quality. So as time goes on, I think they'll only get better. Uh, and I think it's going to be tight in, uh, in the bottom half of the table. Because there's a lot to talk about from Lee's point of view. If it had just closed it out before half-time, obviously Jake, Bibi and Zakade could go over. It could have been a different story again, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure they'll look back on, on things like that, but I guess the key for them will be not looking back too much now. They've got to look at what's next, just getting better at what they didn't quite get there against Wigan. Uh, and, and I'm sure the wins will come fully. Um, did we learn anything about Wigan? Or was that just a normal Wigan performance? Well, I think we learned that they're still a resilient team, aren't they? You know, 18 nil down was almost 24 nil down. And I think they went into the game with five first-choice backs missing. That became six when Field went down. So that they can win with players shuffling into positions. And, you know, that's what the best teams do, isn't it? That's why those teams are normally at the top of the tail because they, they find a way to win at those moments when it's tough. Yeah, I think Gareth nailed it there, the, the resilience of Wigan. You know, as I say, it wasn't, it wasn't a polished performance, but, you know, they, we, we know Wigan have got that in them to, you know, to fight back. And that's one thing they'll never give up. And, you know, they've got, they've got an abundance of quality players in there. They were missing a lot. But you know, do you see the likes, the likes of, uh, of Zach Ardaker when, you know, when they turn the screw and they get that opportunity, you could just see that Wigan fight back, you know, coming. Uh, we've already mentioned we had a, a golden point uh, this weekend in the Super League. We'll save that for a little later, but let's have a look back at the other four matches from round one. Here's Lewis. St Helens got their title defence off to the perfect start. It took Tommy Makerson just over two minutes to open the scoring against Salford. They were made to wait another half an hour for their next try. Regan Grace on the other wing, capitalising on a Salford error. The Red Devils stuck at it and were back in the game when Ken Seo scored, but by the time Alex Wormsley went over, the win was safely in the bag for Saint. Fancies his name on the score sheet, gets his name on the score sheet. They may have ended up on the wrong end of the result, but Wakefield will be encouraged with their performance against Leeds. This the first of two brilliant tries from Tom Johnston, an ominous start to a World Cup year for the winger. Trinity was 16-4 up before Leeds kicked into gear, Brad Dyer restoring parity just before half-time. And trying to burst their way over, and it's Dwyer! Johnston was at it again in the second half, kicking off Luke Gale's kick, and with half an hour left on the clock, the game was balanced at a knife edge. The chase is on, but nobody is going to catch him. It would be Leeds celebrating at full time, however. Jack Broadbent getting the winner. Ian Watson and Brett Hodgson took charge of their new sides for the first time, but it was the latter who would have been happier when Jake Connor opened the scoring. Hull FC quickly had another. Jake Connor involved again, sending Josh Griffin over in the corner. And it was another Josh, Reynolds this time, who put Hull FC out of sight in the second half with this try. And by the time James Gavitt crossed for Huddersfield second, it was simply a consolation for the Giants. From two new coaches to two on their farewell tour, Darrell Powell's Castleford side took the lead when Oliver Holmes pounced on Josh Charley's mistake. Warrington quickly hit back, however, when Toby King got the better of Nia Levels in the air. Evels is a new signing for Cass, and he was quick to make amends Wrong footing Connor Wrench to open his account for the season. Gets uh, the pass away to Evels and Niall Evels is over the line as he got that down. Yes, he's got it. And the fullback was involved again shortly after, putting another debutant, Jordan Turner, in in the corner. From this point on, Cass looked comfortable and it's perhaps fitting that the reigning man of steel, Paul McShane, rounded off the weekend with a drop goal. We've still got one more game to show you, and that is the golden point as well. Uh, right, this is going to be the most uh, pop kettle comment you can ever hear on TV, but uh, Robert Hicks needs a haircut. <laughs> That's an impressive beard as well he's got there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We're all desperate yeah. for a barber. Let's <laughs> go with the beard, Mark. Come on. <laughs> You've done a good job with the hair, dude. But... All right, I need a haircut. <laughs> uh, right, let's start with uh, Saints. Well... At times, 
I thought they were fantastic, especially Theo Farge. Yeah, a uh, big fan of Theo, always have been. Um, yeah, I thought I thought it was a good performance from Saints, certainly from for the f first game of the year. Uh, again, not polished, but it's not going to be, you know. But um, yeah, I think I think clinical, and uh, and obviously, you know, John and Lomax had a, had a big game. Me and Gareth were just saying then about the the number of carries. You know, the the, the great thing with Johnny playing six, you know, he's a great organizer and, and can distri distribute the ball, but he's a running threat, and I think his his running game, you know, was uh, was exceptional for round one. And Saints set the, the tone early, didn't they, without Tommy making some try? Yeah, um, you know I, that's one thing I love about about Tommy and, and Matt Percival did it as well. In you know for his tries, he's attacking, you know, uh, attacking kicks. You know, I, it's one bugbear of mine of uh, of how you know when when attacking teams are kicking, you know, you, you wait for defenders to catch the ball and, and then tackle them. You know, go and attack the ball, and, and we got two tries from it, but. Yeah, Tommy obviously you know, has, had a, has had a good pre-season, a, a good break and, uh, and come back to you. Obviously, Saints are going to be up there come the end. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, the, the, the main men stood up, didn't they? Like we mentioned Johnny Lomax and James Roby again. If you'd watch James Roby play for the first time, you'd think, what a, what a player he is. But because he does it every week, it does sometimes get overlooked. But yet again, he was fantastic. Farge's kicking game caused them all kinds of problems. It's impossible not to see them in the, the top two or three at least. And what about Salford? Uh, Salford, uh, Elijah Taylor was great, uh, a fantastic debut, uh, brought everything that we thought he would, massive industry in attack and defence. Generally, things didn't quite click for them, I think, um, but they will definitely get better. That's the first game under a new coach, Richard Marshall. They've got some quality in the squad. Uh, they weren't expected to start fantastically, I don't think, but they'll definitely improve. Uh, Hull, 22, Huddersfield, 10. I was impressed with Hull. They look well balanced. Yeah, that was up there in terms of performances this weekend. I think they showed some great touches, Jake Connor, and we'll move on to Josh Reynolds. He was definitely worth talking about. But they just looked a lot more solid defensively. They were set up fantastic. They made very few errors. The kick chase and little things like that, there was loads of enthusiasm in it. They looked like everything you'd want under a new coach. And then Connor, and especially Reynolds, just uh, sprinkled a bit of quality when it mattered. You mentioned Jake Connor last week in our build-up show. Yeah. He got a try, played really well, and Josh Reynolds got a debut try as well. Yeah, I thought Josh Reynolds and uh, Mark Sneed looked look really good together, uh, and that probably allows Jake Connor just to concentrate on his own game, like we we, we spoke about, you know, from from pullback. Uh, but I agree with uh, Gareth again. You know, I think it was it was more the attitude based stuff, like the the speed of line on on defence, the kick chase. It's the sort of stuff that Hull, you know, over the previous years we've seen them do it in stops and starts and. And it's if you want to compete to, to win Super League titles, you know you can't do that. You know your best teams do it week in week out. And Hull have got the ability; they've got the they've got the playing roster to, to be able to do that. Um, it, I think for me in the past it's been an attitude thing, and you know that that could change. We're going to talk about the, the fixtures coming up shortly, though. But they're away at Salt. Well, everyone's playing at the uh, Totally Wicked Stadium, but they play Salford away in theory this weekend. So you want to see him put in performance now, don't you? Because that's been the problem with Hull. That's it. It's, it's backing that up week in, week out. And certainly, you know, no disrespect to, to Salford, but they're not coming off the, the best performance. He said there's, there's big changes in their playing staff, new coach. You know, it's probably the time to, to play them and, and, and get on that role and, and keep building that confidence, you know. What about Huddersfield then, uh, Gareth? Six debutants, no Aidan Caesar, which is obviously a miss. Yeah, definitely. I think on his day, he's as influential as anybody in Super League when he plays well. So he was going to be a miss for them. Uh, and a couple of guys that got overlooked, Michael Lawrence didn't play, who's so consistent for them. Uh, and Jake Wardle in the centre, who could be a World Cup ball team, was missing too. So they, they were missing a few key men. It, it just didn't quite click for them uh, at halfback. You know, they lost Caesar. And even then, we thought Gasco might drop into halfback. He played fullback. Uh, so it was Cogger and Russell at halves, and it just didn't quite work. But again, under a new coach, loads of new faces, that they're only going to get better Huddersfield. Uh, Wakefield leads. Um, I saw Luke Gale after the game. He said he felt they were all a bit ring rusty. Yeah, I think that's possibly a fair comment. I think Leeds are looking at it like that. Wakefield certainly had the moments, didn't they? You know, 16-4 up. And Tom Johnston, he was arguably, yeah, mm. arguably the star of the weekend too. Fantastic long-range tries. And again, when we're talking World Cup year... He's putting his stamp on earlier, you know, what he wants to achieve. He didn't shy away from that after the game when he was asked about it. Uh, and what a talented player he is. I suppose at the end of the day, though, Leeds have done their job and got the win. Yeah, the main thing is getting them, is getting them two points, certainly. You know, performance is going to improve, as you say. It's, it's, it's the first game of the, of the season. Uh, a lot of changes in, in, in playing staff. And, you know, Leeds have got injuries as well at the moment. Uh, which are going to come back and, and, and strengthen their performance. But a big, big rap, uh, young Jack Broadbent, I thought, looked, uh, looked outstanding. He's certainly one for the, uh, 
on to the future. And what about Castleford versus Warrington? Two coaches we definitely know are leaving and uh, Castleford come away with the spoils. Yeah, good performance from Cass. Um, you know, to, to see some of their, their play, you know, Paul McShane carried on from, from where he left off, didn't he? Uh, Man of Steel, current Man of Steel. Uh, and good to see Jake Truman back, you know, fully fit. And we spoke about him in uh, the show last week. Uh, Nile Evelds played very, very well for Castleford. Yeah, he's, Might he's, have he's, just solved that. Well, probably that full-back problem since to Zach Hardacre, isn't it? Yeah, and he's, he's consistent as well, Niall. Yeah. You know, both on attack and defence. And, uh, you know, I think I think that was a great signing for them. He's, uh, we mentioned him last week about being, you know, a, a strike player. And, uh, and certainly looked at on, on week one. As I said, you know, they're, they're only going to get better. But Warrington will be, will be massively, massively disappointed with their uh, their performance and a, and a loss. Yeah, it is only one game. But if you're a Warrington fan, do you begin to start getting worried or...? Well, I think, I think it's fair to say there's possibly more disappointment among Warrington fans than most clubs at the moment. Um, you know, with the way they finished last season, I think they wanted the team to come out and show them that something yeah. different, especially in attack where this, the whole Widder Poston thing still don't seem to have got to the bottom of why that's not working. And I think fans would have hoped that they'd come out you know, and played a bit differently, had a real crack. And they didn't. They were disappointing again. Steve Price looked really disappointed after the game. I think they need a big performance quickly to get those fans back on side. And uh, strange for both coaches to announce that they're both going the end of season? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of getting used to it with players where, you know, players are going somewhere next year, but coaches are a bit different, isn't it? The man in charge of the whole team. It must be an unusual situation. Uh, what you'd say about that from that evidence was it, it looked like Castleford are the more likely to send their coach out on a high. Uh, certainly, yeah. Uh, it's going to be uh, tough for Warrington, but we are got Lee next in uh, on uh, Saturday, on Friday, in fact. Good Friday, Warrington uh, versus Lee. But let's turn our attention to the game of the weekend. It was a golden point game, and the Catalan Dragons were in control. This yeah. year, late hits, scored passes and kickers. We need to protect our ball handlers. Lewis. Does well, does well by Key Lewis. Oh, does really well. That's a superb well solo try from 19 year old Mikey Lewis. A glimmer of hope for Hull Kicks and Rovers. But what a special try that was. There's a lot of obstacles in the way of Catalan on a normal basis, but that's just added to it. Good and kick. Right there. Quinlan now. Ball goes oh. out. Oh, picks him up. Ryan Hall goes in for a second try. Laguerre with the the tackle. Litton, Abdul towards the corner. Ryan Hall and Ryan Hall wins the race. Would you believe it? There as well, so close to the try line. King, King will score underneath the post. Absolutely incredible, George King. Still a couple of tackles left in the set. It was Cassiano with court caused the problems and here is Borg, Borg going through, the young man brilliant from Arta Borg, what a break, now then, the Maloney. ball goes back, Maloney to win it for the Catalan Dragons and James Maloney gets the job done, it was young Arta Borg with the sensational break and it's the boot of James Maloney. What a game. Fantastic, and that's the game that we're told that breaks the records or the highest um, TV view in Vegas for 15 years, I think they've said. Uh, what a climax, you know, for people sitting down in front of the TV on a, on a Saturday tea time to turn on and watch that climax to the game must have been terrific. Uh, loads to admire in it, Catalan started well. Hull KR, we've talked about resilience, you know, I don't think anyone would have batted an eyelid if they fold at 28-4, I think it was. It Stirring was, yeah. comeback, yeah. 12-0, 18-4 uh, at half time and then 28-4, yeah. Yeah, so fair play to them coming back. And great to see Ryan Hall back in Super League uh, with a hat-trick and a terrific after-match interview as well, I think, which got a lot of attention on social media. Yeah, Ryan Hall hat-trick at Headingley. <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's scored a few there, hasn't he? No, great to see Ryan back and uh, you know, see him back in Super League and obviously come back in, in good form, had a good pre-season, looked really, really well, really fit. And, you know, to, uh, to throw another hat-trick in there in his, in his first game was uh, it's what you'd expect from Ryan Hall, isn't it? And can Hull KR, obviously, they're disappointed over the golden point, but they've got to take a lot of heart from that. 28-4 oh, down. Yeah, they will do. You know, I think I, I like watching Hull KR. Last year, they, they seemed like they, you know, they, they, they've not care in the world. And, you know, they love to throw the ball about and express themselves. And 
great comeback, you know, they obviously showed the, showed the resilience there, but uh, yeah, again, Catalan, you know, they did the best, didn't they, to, to steal defeat from the jaws of victory, um, but, you know, they got, they got the win in the end and, and a, a big game player, James Maloney. I mean, we talk about consistency of both of those clubs, I think, OKR and Catalans, and we've seen that within one game, haven't we? You know, both teams probably very happy with half of that match and probably looking at the other half thinking there's some old problems there that we still need to fix up, so they'll move forward onto week two and, and look to be more consistent within the 80 minutes, I'm sure. And plenty of new signings, but uh, Sam Tompkins still pulling the strings of the Catalan Dragons. Yeah, absolutely, hugely influential. There seems to be a real determination about him in that when he did his pre-season media and stuff again, another player that the World Cup was thrown at straight away, and he's not shied away from the fact that he wants a big year, he wants that World Cup shirt, and I think we saw that in round one. And you mentioned his interview after the game. Great to see Ryan Hall get off to a great start, isn't it, personally? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, not only is he a great player and a genuine star of the competition, but a character, you know, is a bit different the way he, uh, he talks to the media than other players. He's always got something interesting to say. Uh, he showed that again on, on Saturday night, and he'll be a great asset for KR on and off the field. It's uh, only uh, round one. Obviously, that was a standout game. What do you think was a standout performance this weekend, then? I think Hull FC still, I think they've laid down a marker there under Brett Hodgson. All the things that people spoke about, what Hull need to improve on, uh, the consistency of performance, being solid in defence, all the good signs were there for them. Uh, and I also think Josh Reynolds was just fantastic to watch. He's one of those players where there's something happening every time he's around the ball. He took the line on consistently, he scored a try, ended up with a head bandage on, he started a bit of a fight, he made a break with his shorts falling down. You know, there was always something going on uh, and I think he's going to be one to watch every weekend this year. Scully, what stood out for you? Yeah, I agree. I think Hull FC, uh, and you mentioned Josh Reynolds as well. You know, we, we spoke last week about him being a controversial character, but, you know, the boy can play, and I think it showed that. I think they took a bit of responsibility off, uh, off Mark Sneed as well, and, and, and Jake Connor as well, you know, allowing him to, to play and enjoy his game at, at fullback and, you know, watch this space. Hopefully, he can be consistent week in, week out, and, uh, and Hull can compete. But that's the real key. We said it, didn't we, last week? Hull have got to be more consistent. Yeah, yeah, they've got to be week in, week out, and you know, we spoke about the Salford game coming up. You know, this this week it's it's a big one for them to to back up that performance now. Round two is dedicated to Mossy Masoy in the Betfred Super League, and Lewis caught up with the man himself. Mossy, it's great to see you. Fantastic to see you looking so well. How are you, mate? You know, I'm just just come back from physio, so so legs are hanging on, but. Um, you know, just just doing little bits every day, just trying to get better. I'm, I'm really trying to um, work on my balance. Um, I actually have to go in for a knee operation to try straighten my knee so I can uh, uh, balance, uh, get better balance on my legs. So um, hopefully I can suss that out and you know, I'll have about three or four falls a week just because just of balance. Um, so that's a struggle at the moment, but like I said, it could, it could have been worse and you know, where I was 14 months ago compared to where I am today, I'm just grateful for what I got. Because um, it's, it's not only just um, the physical side, it's also stuff inside, the internal stuff. And, um, you know, psychologically, it's, it's quite tough. But, you know, I, I've, been, I've been pretty lucky to have the support that I have. And um, sometimes I feel guilty because there's a lot of other people out there in similar situations to myself that, um, that haven't. And, and they're doing it tough and I just wanted to to um, you know, let them know um, that we're all we're all just grinding away and trying to do better. Well, you, your family, your friends are doing your bit to to help other people in your situation. Round two of the Betfred Super League is Mossy Masoy round as such. There's the Mossy Masoy Foundation, which we're trying to raise money for. Just kind of give us a brief explanation as to what that is and what it does. I can't I can't take any credit for for the foundation. Um, you know, there there was a collective. Um, you know, uh, people that really uh, cared about my family and I um, started off by Neil Hydro and, you know, he, he reached out to a few friends of his and, um, you know, they heard about the situation that I was in and um, what's going on. And, um, uh, and, you know, they come up with this foundation, not to, not just to help myself and the family, but, um, you know, um, people in the future um, and, and that hopefully um, touch wood. Um, it never happens to them, but if, if, if it does, um, there's going to be some more support there for them. You know, ever since day one, since my accident, people have been there from, from the beginning and they're still here and they're still just, just, just want the best for, for me. And um, yeah, I, I, I can't thank the whole entire rugby league community 
and even people not associated with rugby league, um, not not just from over here in the UK, but all around the world, over in Australia, New Zealand. So it's been a, been massive support. You know, I've, I've made heaps of great friends, um, met a lot of good people, you know, through rugby. And um, yeah, we, we won't take the weather, but you know, the, the people, <laughs> yeah, the people that we've met has has made our time here so much so much better. It's um, you know, even through such such a bad injury, um, you know. The positives are the people that I've met and um, made friends with, and um, and co- hopefully continue to be friends in the future. So it's uh, Mossy Masoy uh, around, and fans are encouraged to buy virtual tickets for the Easter fixtures, which of course include a clash between uh, the two clubs that Mossy played for Hull KR and St Helens. You can also text in as well. Uh, the information is at the Mossy Masoy Foundation UK. Let's hope we raise plenty of money for him. Um, great to hear from him, and obviously great to see. I mean, it's so tough for him. It is, yeah, and but it's entirely going typical. in the right direction. Yeah, it's entirely typical when you listen to that interview. There, he's talking about other people who he thinks might be in a, a worse position than him, and that's come through right from the start with Mossy Masoy, and and just the attitude that he's had towards it has been absolutely remarkable. Uh, it's been fantastic to see the game kind of rally around him. And this foundation started to, to help other people as well who might find themselves in the same position. I think we've seen the Australian clubs getting on board as well as all our Super League ones as well. Because there's a lot of good feeling about you know, what kind of a person he is, not just a, a great player, obviously, and hopefully as much money as possible is raised to help him and his family this weekend. Uh, we've spoken a lot over the last few months about the Rugby League family. And again, Super League recognising what Mossy's done and what he's planning to do. Yeah, what a great initiative from uh, from Super League, you know, to, to support Mossy and, and do the virtual ticket. You know, fans are at home watching the game and, you know, if everybody can contribute, you know, it's, it's, it's going to a great cause, not only for, for Mossy, but for several others in need as well. And what an inspirational man, you know, from, from day one, from his accident. You know, I remember Mike Rush when, uh, when, when we signed him at St. Helens, showed me a video of him before he came over. He said the smiling assassin, and you know that smile's never left him, has it? Even, even through some what must have been the you know the darkest of times, you know he's a, he's such a an inspirational man. Yeah, keep fighting, Mossy, and it's a Mossy Masoy Foundation Co UK, and he's got the details about how to text to make a donation and how to buy the virtual tickets as well. Uh, let's have a look at your Easter fixtures. No Wigan St Helens, but of course. You don't want Wigan versus St Helens, do you, uh, when there's no crowd? That's the Challenge Cup draw. I tell you what, we'll do the fixtures in the Super League in a minute. Let's talk the Challenge Cup draw uh, for uh, a few moments. So, uh, uh, York City Knights versus Wigan, that'll be live on the Sportsman. You've got Swinton versus Warrington, Hull KR versus Cass, Catalans versus Wakefield, that's going to be live on uh, BBC Two on uh, Saturday, the 10th of April. Uh, Featherstone versus Hull, St Helens Leeds, that's live on BBC One on Saturday the 10th. Uh, Lee versus Huddersfield, Salford versus Widnes. So Catalans, Wakefield, St Helens Leeds live on the BBC. Uh, York City Knights versus Wigan on the Friday night, uh, live and free on the Sportsman. The other games are on the Our League app. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about St Helens versus Leeds. Yeah, two big guns there, but both coaches had a bit of a row smile when that came out. They probably want to avoid that one, uh, but great for TV viewers and everybody else that they'll clash. Uh, it gives the, the whole round a real marquee match, doesn't it? And uh, they'll go out on live television and uh, it's a tough one to call. You know, people have underestimated Leeds in the cup last year. I think they weren't expected to beat Wigan in the semi where they came up with the goods and I'm, I'm sure St Helens won't be underestimated this time. You'd have preferred not to draw leads, wouldn't you? Yeah, of course you would. You'd take the easiest route, you know, to the to the final. Of course, of course, you know, it's all about winning at uh, at Wembley. But you know, if you always say if you're going to win it, you've got to you've got to beat the best teams out there. And uh, and Leeds uh, Saints is, is certainly a, a clash. You know, a lot of the other teams around that. I think we spoke about it last year with the, with the condensed uh, cup now and the and the rounds that you know some of them lesser clubs who, who've. Who've never been to Wembley, you know, might fancy the chances of getting there. And certainly, with one of the big guns out of the uh, out of the equation. Uh, live in the sports, I'm looking forward to uh, York versus Wigan. Yeah, fantastic, and we'll we'll get to see that smart new stadium as well. And and York packed full of Super League experience. Wigan are still going to be missing a lot of players there. You know, they might well they will fancy having a crack at them. I'm sure. I'm not saying York are going to win, but I think they'll uh, they'll certainly be a test for Wigan. And I think that and that Featherstone Hull game stands out as well to me. 
a repeat of the classic 1983 final uh, and another championship club that will be relishing uh, welcoming a Super League team onto the home ground, I think. Such a shame, there's going to be no crowds. I know those two games perhaps more than most stick out. You think they'd be pretty full, wouldn't you, both at York and Featherstone? They'd be big away supports because I think that you know the Super League fans would like to go to those grounds as well, so that's a shame. Uh, but still, they should be terrific viewing. And uh, it's great that we've got a Challenge Cup back as well, isn't it? It is, yeah, of course it is. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, come final time, you know, we might see uh, a crowd of some sort at Wembley. And, I think there's a very good uh, chance. Yeah, 17th think, of think, July, isn't it? it is. so. you know, hopefully, uh, you know, everything goes to plan you know, with the, the world. And uh, yeah, we can see who knows who's going to be there as well. You know, there's, uh, there's some great games there though for, for, for that first round. Uh, so that's the Challenge Cup, which is not this weekend, it's the weekend after. So there's two games live in the BBC, a game live in the Sportsman, that's York versus Wigan, and the other games on the Hour League app, so you won't miss any of the action. But let's talk about this weekend's uh, Super League fixtures. So normally we have, obviously, Wigan versus Saints on Easter weekend, but rightly so. Uh, the Super League have decided to save that because you want to have fans for that game, don't you? Yeah, of course it makes sense, doesn't it, to you know to save you your biggest games for when we've uh, when we've got crowds and yeah, it won't be the same. You know, it's, it's something we used to Good Friday, the, the Saints Wigan derby. Um, I've been fortunate to, to play many of them, but as you say, you want to see fans there, you want to see that atmosphere in uh, in a derby game, and you know, hopefully see that later down the line. Uh, let's go back to those uh, fixtures. We start on uh, Thursday night. Uh, Wigan versus Wakefield and I think Wakefield can certainly take from some heart from that performance against Leeds. Absolutely, I think they'll look at the, the way they played against Leeds for long periods of time and the fact that Wigan obviously stumbled a bit against Lee and they've, they've had more injury problems since then I think Wakefield will fancy their chances in that game. Hull Cow Saints Yeah, an away game for Saints that they're totally wicked um, <laughs> you know, it's, Strange uh, times we live in Scully. Strange times but you know, Hulk are again, you know, talking uh, about the likes of Wakefield, you know, they'll take heart out of, you know, it was a defeat, but, you know, they certainly ran Catalan close and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll look at taking that performance into, uh, in, into the, you know, the game against the champion. Warrington Lee, I don't want to get carried away, but there's a bit of pressure on Warrington going into this now, isn't there? I think that's a big game for the Wolves. I, I don't think it's, it's just a case of winning. I think those fans want to see a different kind of performance and them kind of stamp their authority on a bit and these big name players you know, stand up and perform and it won't be easy against a, a Lee team who will feel that they can compete with anyone having pushed Wigan close. And finishing Good Friday, Leeds Cass. Always yes. a tasty game. Yeah, always a you know a derby game and, uh, and obviously both teams coming off a, off a win. Um, I, think, I think that's set to be a, a cracking game. Uh, Salford Hull, we've mentioned it already. It'll be interesting to see a Hull perform in this one. Yeah, the, the test for them now is this consistency thing and backing it up, isn't it? I think they'll come across a Salford team that will be better uh, for that run out against St. Helens with their new signings and playing under Richard Marshall. Uh, so it won't be easy for Hull and it's, it'll be a good indication of where both clubs are going this year, I think. And Huddersfield, Catalan, anything could happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that Huddersfield will be, will be looking to, to still build, obviously, on, uh, you know, on Ian Watson, how he wants them to, to, to play. Uh, Catalan, I think they'll be... They'll be looking to improve on that second half performance, you know, where they nearly threw the game away. But we, we know what they're capable of. You know, it's, it's can they do it for 80 minutes? So that is this weekend's fixtures. But let's look back at last weekend and have try of the week. Hello and welcome to the Hour League Try of the Week. I'm Dave Woods. Let's have a look at this week's contenders. Try one this week comes from the Super League game between Warrington and Castleford. Not a lot that Castleford don't know about Daryl Clark. They'll know about his energy and his pace. Look at that. Absolutely shoots out like a bullet from a gun to score that try. Try two. Hull against Huddersfield. Jake Connor looking for England selection maybe at the end of the year. Ghosting through, bamboozling the defence. A sleight of hand and a step here and over he goes. Try three is from the Challenge Cup, Backley against Featherstone. I'm not sure if Johnny Campbell actually planned to do this, but it was brilliant nonetheless. Dropped it on his foot, little kick over the top, and diving in to score. Frustration from the Featherstone defence. Have a look again. Drop, kick, and off he goes, and he gets there. Try four is from the same game, but this time it's Chris Wellham against Backley. 
look at the offload here from New Brown. The ball is spilt by Backley. Brown picks it up and somehow gets it away. And over in the corner goes Wellham. Look at the hands and the opportunity created. Try five is also from the cup. Lewis Els from Witness, tricking his way over from dummy half. And finally, try six. Tom Johnston with a worldie on the very first weekend of the season. In and out of Tom Briscoe. Lines up Richie Myler. Goodbye, Richie Myler. It's the pace that absolutely burns him. And over in the corner. Wow. Again from Tom Johnston. Uh, you can vote on the Our League app. I think probably said the best to last. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Tom Johnson was, uh, was tough, yeah. hard done to there. I thought it was going to be, but yeah, um, obviously the last one there from, from Tom. And it could have been one, one of two that he scored as well. Out, uh, outstanding tries. And after the year we've had, it's great to see the Championship teams back in the Challenge Cup. Yeah, absolutely. And, and starting in the league this weekend as well, it means so much to those communities. You know, those clubs, it's no lesser than the, the Super League clubs, what it means to those fans and those local areas. So for them to be back on the field, they've obviously had a longer break because they didn't come back last year, uh, is a tremendous, tremendous boost for those clubs. Yeah, the Championship is uh, back this weekend. All the games are on the Our League app, as by the way, if you want to watch the games. I think the pick is probably at York City Knights versus Toulouse at 430 on Saturday, but Lewis has picked out some players to watch in the Championship. Betfred Championship is back. It's been a long 12 months off for all of these clubs, players and supporters, but it returns this week. Seven games of what promises to be real, honest rock and roll rugby league, all available to watch pay-per-view on the Hour League app. And of course, with such a long layoff, there's been plenty of players moving and shaking between clubs. A few players coming in from overseas, new signings and some returning fan favourites as well. So I've had a look through. I've picked five that I'm really looking forward to see play this season. I'm going to start in the south of France. Toulouse, this man, Mark Carella, bold statement, but he's the best player in the championship. He can do it all. Run, kick, pass. He's got a great football brain. He's hugely important to the way Toulouse play. Extremely exciting player. Definitely one to look out for if you're watching them. This season, we're going to make the short jump across the channel now to London. This man, Abbas Miski, new signing, Lebanese international, never really got the chance to show what he could do in the NRL. Had a fantastic World Cup in 2017. Big athletic winger, could be a real weapon for the London Broncos. We're going to stay in the east, we're going to go north to Newcastle. Kieran Gill, one of the few players for Newcastle who will be looking to prove themselves in the Championship after promotion. He's got a ridiculous strike rate. 35 tries in 28 games in League One for Thunder. Can he transfer that into the Championship and be the weapon that we know he can be in League One? It's a different division. I've got every confidence that he will do it again. Now, this man, Adam Lawton, made a massive impact at Widnes in 2014, dropped off the radar a bit and then popped up at Salford a few years ago. Super League experience now, big human being, physical player. He should be a real weapon to witness as well and we saw him in try scoring form there and we'll finish off with Connor Robinson brilliant for York in League One 2018 League One player of the season clever halfback likes to run the game ball in his hands and he will just kick teams to death he's at Halifax now back at a club that he's been at before a really good signing for them can't wait to see how he goes cannot wait for the Betfred Championship to return but it all kicks off this weekend it's all available pay-per-view on the Hour League app uh, cheers, Lewis. You could have tucked your uh, shirt in at least, couldn't you? But uh, yeah, look, I just think it's great. To have, after a year we've had, it's just great to have a championship back. It certainly is. You know, there's, there's some great players, as, as we've just seen with uh, with Lewis there. Um, you know, really looking forward to, to some of the games. And I think there'll be an extra dimension this year with a lot of Super League clubs losing the, the reserve grade. I know a lot of the, the younger players from Super League clubs have, have moved to championship clubs. There's been some great recruitment. Uh, and there's a lot of good young players, you know, coming through the uh, the Betfred Championship this year. So I think I think there'll be some great games, and and to see how some of the some of the teams have, have worked over the off season is uh, is going to be exciting. Who are the teams to watch? Is it Toulouse, London, York, 
Featherstone. Featherstone as well, yeah. I, I genuinely think there'll be there'll be eight clubs at least that think they can make those playoffs. Uh, I think Toulouse and Featherstone deserve to be the front runners before the season kicks off. Uh, both signed lots of, of Super League players. I think Toulouse have signed an entire Super League pack, so that's kind of signalled their intent. Uh, but there'll be others coming into it as well. You know, I, I'm certainly excited to see that York to lose game. I think that will give us some good early indications about about those two clubs. And the championships coming back, and the Betfred Women's Super League coming back in April as well. Obviously, they've had this huge break. Yeah, that's that's great to see. That that is one area of the game that can and have a huge growth over the next few years and grow rugby league overall. So terrific to see their fixtures announced. Um, the women's game has, has grown tremendously, you know, aligning with Super League clubs, getting sponsors like yourselves on board, uh, you know, the main events going on to standalone grounds and, and having proper events around them and being on live TV, they've all added up to help the women's game and, and hopefully that growth continues. Right, we're in the uh, 26th season of the Super League. Uh, Super League celebrated 25 years this week and there's a very special documentary on 25 years of the Super League. Watch this. And the European Super League is underway. But looking back on that night, I mean, did any of us think it was going to happen in the first place? No. Um, did we think it would happen in Paris and we'd get 17,000, nearly 18,000 people there? No. Uh, but the game took off. It was a fantastic match. And Paris Saint-Germain won it in the end. I mean, it was just a fairy tale for the game in, in France. Paris, I mean, yes, the game had been played there. Uh, previously, I'm sure that Tony can give you more detail on that than me. But never before had a club game been played there involving a British and a, and a French team. And we got all those people there on the night. We had a West End stage show and then the game kicked off. And it was just, just unbelievable. It was a fantastic night. We built up to it all the way through the previous winter season. We've been thinking, this is it, this is it. And of course, March the 29th, it was high spring in the in the French capital. It was just a wonderful, wonderful occasion, and it really was a privilege to be there. And if you want to watch that documentary, it's on the uh, Sportsman's YouTube page. God, 25 years. Makes me feel old. Makes me yeah. feel old as well when I was, uh, when I was playing in the opening, uh, opening season. You know, I remember that, 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 not that, old, that, that, that Paris Sheffield game uh, like it was yesterday. You know, our, our time has flown. 25 years ago, Scully. I know. It's, uh, it's unreal. I don't feel any different. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, certainly am. But yeah, what a what a success it's uh, it's been as well, and uh, you know some some iconic moments. One over over Eddie's shoulder there. What I was uh, you know fortunate to be part of the uh, the wide to west, and uh, some great moments over over those twenty five years. Uh, a lot of people are critical of things in rugby league, uh, Gareth, but I've just got a good feeling about this year. After what we've gone through with COVID, we've got the World Cup to look forward to. We've had a great start in the Super League, a women's games coming back. The Championship's back this weekend. We've got a lot to look forward to. Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, COVID's been bad for so many things generally, but I think in rugby league, what it has done is brought an element of unity back to the game. I think there's a realisation that everyone in the sport has to be in it together. And I think rugby league is at its strongest when we're, we're like that and the clubs are together and they have a common goal. Uh, there's loads of storylines all over Super League, Championship League One, women's game. And like you said, with the World Cup at the end of the year, Every weekend we can say, well, what about, what about if he plays in the World Cup or she does or, you know, what are their prospects for, for the World Cup at the end of the year? And I think that will add to the excitement throughout 2021. And isn't it great to be back to be actually talking about some games as well? It is, you know, the, that's what the game's all about. It's about the products on the field. And, and that's, you know, for me, that, you know, we're the best in the world at that. It's, it's the best game to, to watch. Um, you know, and, and let's, like Gareth said, you know, continue to, to, to grow this great game. You know, we've got everything... To, to shout about, um, you know, let's let's continue to, to bang the drum and it's them players on the field that, that do the biggest. Thanks, gents. Really enjoyed your company. So the Betfred Super League is back. The Championship is back at the weekend and we'll be back every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock throughout the season. See you soon.